Chris Lamping here, PHRA's Executive Director. Welcome to PHRA's podcast, P4, People, Purpose, Passion, Pittsburgh. P4 is brought to you by our members and sponsors, Lattice and the University of Pittsburgh, Executive MBA Programs, and the Center for Executive Education. We appreciate their support, and we'll hear from them throughout the podcast, beginning with the University of Pittsburgh Executive MBA Programs and Center for Executive Education. special conference edition of P4. In this episode, Pete Tram, P4 host, and Heather Rendelich, one of PHRA's featured keynotes, will discuss how to find beauty in the midst of chaos. Heather, welcome to the podcast today. Thanks so much for joining us and giving all of these listeners a little bit of a teaser uh, leading up to the uh, PHRA conference this year uh, coming at the end of September. So thanks so much for being here. Excited to dig in to what you've done professionally, what you've done as an author, and how all those different pieces have changed your life and outlook on the kind of HR world. So first question, Heather, who are you? How'd you get to where you are today? And tell us more about your background, please. Well, thanks, Pete. It's a pleasure to be here. And my name's Heather Rendulik, and I am an HR professional. I have been for about a decade now. And I'm also, like you mentioned, I am a published author. My book is titled Headstrong Through Life, Love, and Brain Surgery. And it's a a memoir about overcoming challenges that I face uh, medically. And I actually had five strokes in brain surgery by my 23rd birthday and was paralyzed. Um, But it more encompasses how we all can overcome things you know, in any situation, whether it's at work or in your personal life. And I really strongly believe in mindset and that there's always a way to find beauty in the chaos. And that's what I'm going to talk about at the upcoming conference as well. Finding beauty in the chaos. I uh, can only imagine that there was a little bit of uh, chaos and tumultuous times, five strokes and brain surgeries before you were 23 years old. Holy cow. So how did you get into this HR world? Um, you know, was it something that you did for work? Was it a degree program? Let's talk about kind of how you got into here before we dig into more of your understanding in the workplace. I was, uh, I did get my bachelor's in HR management from IUP. I initially, my major was accounting because I had friends who had parents who were accountants and it looked good and it, you know, they drove nice cars and they seemed pretty happy with their lives. So I went into that, but quickly realized I am not uh, cut out to be an accountant. I'm not a black and white person. I am, I really like people and working with people and I didn't like being confined to so many strict like rules, you know, in accounting, you, it's either this or that there's no in between. And I talked to a friend whose dad was in HR and I ended up having lunch with him and we just talked about all the different areas you could get involved in specialties and like benefits and payroll and recruitment and all the things. And it just sounded like a perfect job for me. And so I started and here I am uh, over a decade later and I love my job. I love HR. I love working with people. And I currently am working with a newly developed HR team and I'm getting to do all the fun stuff of helping to develop policies and procedures and having a lot of fun. I, I love it. Um, so over the last 10 years, can you tell us about some of the organizations that you've been in and some of your roles and responsibilities, uh, which will then feed into some of the what you've learned and the challenges you've seen? So where, where have you been, Heather? <laughs> I've been mostly in healthcare. I started with a nonprofit and they help people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And I was an HR generalist there 
really a generalist role. I got to have my hands in all different hats and got to do a lot of different areas of HR all wrapped in one. I then also worked for a very small marketing company. Um, so I got to learn a little bit of the marketing side of things, which was fun. And now I currently am with a um, digital uh, marketing company that's in the healthcare space. And I am fully remote and we're helping grow the company and it's a, a fast growing company. And so I'm having a lot of fun, like I just mentioned, developing some SOPs and all of that. But it's been, there's been bumps along the way, but I'm having fun, so. Yeah, uh, so no matter if we're at a small company, medium-sized company, large company, uh, things aren't always going to go our way. So you building out the SOP is super, super helpful, right? So that it can be repeatable and it can scale. Um, but sometimes, well, oftentimes, we create these things because something went wrong or we're building off of lessons learned from something that went wrong from somebody else. So can you talk to us a little bit about some of the challenges and maybe insight to some of the chaos that you've uh, observed and or been part of throughout this journey? Well, I'm a planner and I think most of the chaos that I've experienced has come from, you know, it being a smaller company that's growing and they didn't have HR in-house prior. There were no SOPs and it was like I, chaos really is the left for lack of a better term because we were kind of like just figuring it out by the seat of our pants. And, you know, I, I really truly believe in consistency and, you know, I like to have a game plan, a, a flight plan, so to speak, and, you know, to be able to work off of that. And we did not have it. And it was really chaotic, especially when things would come up and we didn't really know what was the best practice or what, how should we approach the situation. So, and, and developing the SOPs was hard and also challenging because, you know, we have to think on a grander scale, things that haven't happened yet, or, you know, as the company grows, this has to be able to scale, like you said, with the company. So I want to develop something that is going to work long term and not just be a temporary solution. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. Uh, and throughout this, you've probably gotten a couple of scars, right? And <laughs> working in the trenches, you're like, geez, we go through this problem again, we will not do it that way. Um, so talk a little bit more about your experiences and how this chaos has changed you and how Heather has changed in a, in a professional setting and, you know, kind of what, what built you to who you are today? Well, definitely I've, there's been a lot of bumps and scars and I actually this morning was talking to my boss about one that just happened recently and we were like, we're not doing that that way again. So it. I, I think what has helped me and what has really changed um, in my career is my mindset. And I don't look at things as, oh, why, why is this happening to me? Maybe I do for a moment, like, oh, this is stressful or frustrating, but I then quickly try, I have to really choose to change my mindset and to look at it as an opportunity and to look at it as a way of, I can grow. And this is, you know, this is experience. This is stuff that in the long term, I'm going to look back on this frustration or this bad, so called bad season. And I'm going to see how far I grew from it. And it really is making me a better HR professional. Hmm. So uh, this kind of comes full circle to where we started. Right. Hey, uh, you've had a lot of hurdles to come over professionally, but let's not forget five strokes and brain surgeries before 23 years old. Holy smokes. So whenever you're looking at this uh, kind of bad season, as you called it, I like the way you talked about that. Uh, this bad season. How, how can I learn from this? How can I grow from this thing? Growth mindset, continuously improving, iterate, iterate, iterate finding those 10,000 ways not to build a light bulb, right? So that we can figure out that one way to be successful and then build on it and amplify that good so that more good can come from it over time. How has your uh, kind of ability to, you know, change your mindset, improved, enhanced, grown 
over time? And is there, are there any tips you can share with us? Cause sometimes it's tough. I've, I'm, 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 you know, <laughs> definitely at fault for that, man, this is a crappy day. <laughs> I'm in a slump. How do I get that little bit of inspiration? Well, I can only help you so much, unfortunately, Pete, but I, my tips are, it, it's a choice. You know, we, it's not, it is easier said than done. And listen, we're human. I, you're going to have those days where everything seems gloom and that's okay. You're allowed to have feelings like that. I'm not saying everything is sunshine and rainbows. Uh, it is, I had a day last week where I just it was like, everything was going wrong. And, and I let myself feel those feelings, but then I didn't let myself stay there. So that is a big tip. Don't, you can let yourself feel that, but don't stay there and then just choose to look at the bigger picture and to look at it as an opportunity to say, okay, what am I going to gain from this experience that I didn't have before it? And that's the part of finding the beauty in the chaos. There is always going to be rubbish or yucky stuff in the picture. But if you kind of take the focus back a little bit and look at the bigger picture, you're going to see the pretty flowers and the pretty things. So it's just really shifting that mindset. And yes, it is easier said than done, but everybody can do it and everybody has that ability. A a amen to that. <laughs> Agree a hundred percent. And I think having the network around us and the support structure makes that possible. And something that, you know, I've listened to and read from some of your previous work. Can you tell us about how to, you know, leverage and collaborate and, you know, kind of get the external help along the way so that whenever we are in those tough times, we're not alone in those tough times? Well, that's the one I uh, want. It's a beautiful thing about being part of the human race is we all go through hard times, whether personal or professional, we're all in the same boat and we can't control those bad things that happen to us. But what we can control is how we react to those situations. And so again, this put the power in your hands and I leverage off of, you know, if it's work leverage off of your coworkers, like your team, they're going through it too. And I always suggest at every job, whether new or you've been there a hundred years to find a mentor, find somebody, it might not even be in your department, but somebody in the company who can help mentor you. And maybe they're uh, more senior as a professional and they're able to give you, they've seen it all. They've seen the bad times, the good times and everything in between. They're able to be a soundboard to you, able to give you advice based on their own experiences and I've been blessed that I have a family who my dad owned his own business for 30 some years and he has seen a lot of things and also a very, I'm very close with him. And my parents through my medical um, difficulties were really my support system, but my dad now in my professional uh, growth, he is really been a real big mentor for me um, to help me through these seasons as a professional. And you just, you just have to reach out and things like the Pittsburgh Human Resources Association, you know, if you're in HR and that's a good fit for you, you're working with other HR professionals. HR is super hard now because especially with the last couple of years, all the different laws and regulations and COVID and oh, it's been a nightmare. But we, you know, we have learned so much from it. We've grown from it and we're better off than we were before it. So you, you, your network is out there. Collaborate with everybody you can. You just have to look sometimes. And, but there are people out there that can support you. Yeah, if you don't ask, uh, people aren't likely to come over to you. And it's cool to see how some of the newer uh, PHRA members have been able to find kind of formal and informal mentorship uh, throughout the association. So shout out to, to Liz and Catherine for doing a great job bringing folks together uh, inside of PHRA. And then Heather, it's so important to find, you know, those, those mentors in the professional setting. 
And, you know, kind of short, uh, you know, kind of question to you, how can we find those people inside these organizations? Where, where, where do I look? I would look at I, every meeting I have with, um, whether it's, you know, cross departments or in my own, I look at it as an opportunity to connect with this person that I'm meeting with. And I work completely remote, so it, I have to work a little extra hard because I can't just walk into somebody's office and say, hey, you want to have a cup of coffee and talk about your day? You know, I have to really make use of my time on, you know, Zoom and whatnot. But look at it as an opportunity to find a connection with that person you're talking to. And that's how you start to grow relationships. You can then form off of that connection. Like if Pete, if you love, I don't know, ice cream and I say, well, I love ice cream, Pete. And what's your favorite flavor? And we start talking about that and like, you're just connecting and then you get to know them more on a personal level. And then you can start to slowly work on collaborating. If it's, you know, you want it to be professional um, growth opportunities. You can connect with them more on, you know, listen, Pete, I'm having a really bad day today. I can't wait till I get off work to have my favorite ice cream. And you say, well, Heather, what's going on? Like, and I just kind of open up to you a little bit, but you have to be open and every relationship you get what you get, what you put into it out of it. So look at it as every opportunity with everyone you meet, even if it is in the office, And you're at the, you know, in the break room and you just start talking to somebody about their day or, oh, I really like your shoes. And um, so, yeah, it's just everything's an opportunity. Everything is an opportunity. It's our mindset, how we look at it and how we can go about it. And as we continue to build out that support structure over time, we can also ask them, hey, who else should I have a conversation with? So we're not alone at any point on this professional journey. Uh, last question I have here, Heather, is around looking forward. We've been hit, you know, pretty hard uh, by this, uh, you know, kind of t- turnover tsunami, by this, you know, uh, kind of age of employee choice, right? The, the, the great resignation. It's been called a bunch of different things. COVID has sort of accelerated uh, uh, our need to change things and uh, address issues. As we look out to 2023 and beyond, What are your takes on how we can be ready for what's coming ahead of us? How can each of us be proactive for any kind of tomorrow? I really think the best way to be proactive is to start working on that mindset mentality, that growth mentality, because listen, it's hard. We can't predict the future or else, you know, So we can't really be too proactive in planning for what we don't know is coming. So right now the culture has changed, the landscape has changed and employees now aren't looking for jobs. It is a lifestyle. It is, they're looking for a lot more than they used to. And we're learning how to adapt to that now. And it's hard and, you know, but we need to just stay and take this as a learning experience and that we're helping our companies prepare for creating a better culture for our employees because that's what they want. And it'll probably change next year. And I don't know, maybe it'll be back the other way. Maybe the pendulum swings, Who knows? but at least we have created a better culture for all of our staff, even current staff. And we're learning you know, as we go, which is part of any business, things turn every two seconds and we have to be able to grow and move with the company. And as that pendulum swings, we have to be able to kind of dodge the bullets, so to speak. I love it. Uh, And if I was able to read the future, (laughs) I wonder what it would say uh, for next year. But I'm excited for the conference at the end of September. Thank you again uh, for for sharing. Um, Any other closing thoughts or uh, tidbits you wanted to share to get people excited about you speaking at uh, the PHRA conference this year? 
I, I just, I'm so excited to speak for everybody and share. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about um, not only what happened to me, you know, a while ago with my medical crisis, but also talk about, you know, how I handle and being an HR professional, how I handle those curveballs and, you know, on an everyday basis of what to expect. And, and the listeners are going to be able to take away things not only in their professional life, but take away of how to better deal with challenges in their personal life as well, which we all have. So I'm really excited to see everyone and share my story. Thanks, Heather. Oh, thanks, Pete. In a world where businesses are coming to terms with the demands of employee choice, solutions to improve workplace culture are crucial. Businesses of all sizes are doing everything they can to attract and retain top talent during this unprecedented time. Connection to the team, a sense of belonging, and a feeling of purpose rank high in the needs of today's work-from-anywhere society. Sound familiar? At Lattice, we understand the importance team building and positive employee-employer relationships have on the success of a workplace. Done well? Top-down and peer-to-peer knowledge sharing can unlock new levels of productivity and profitability to create a culture of cohesive collaboration. Ongoing high-quality connections reduce burnout and mitigate mental health issues, more important now than ever with social isolation on the rise. Lattice is a tool to make internal employee engagement easier and much more impactful for the entire organization. Lattice is a proven, secure workplace solution that is easy to implement for organizations of all sizes. So what are you waiting for? Let's Lattice. The PHRA P4 podcast was created to help build HR readers through discussions with thought and business leaders on the most critical success factor of any business, its people. If you enjoy an episode, Please help us spread the word by subscribing to the podcast and providing us a rating. We would love for you to take a screenshot of the episode, tag PHRA, and share it with your followers.